VPX on the Legends pinball. Mm -hmm. How does that work exactly? I think you said something about streaming, Jared, but I, I'm not in the mm. loop on this. So tell yeah. me what you know. So from what I've seen on the forums, because uh, there's been a fair bit of information floating around there recently, is that the VPX tables, due to the license of Visual Pinball X, um, does not allow um, the, the product to be installed on a commercial machine. Um, so these tables, and also because Virtual Pinball is very much a Windows-centric product, um, it doesn't have the libraries that's needed to run on the at games system, which is sort of like a hybrid Android, from what I understand. So therefore, the only option for these VPX tables designed by community members um, is to stream uh, through the um, the arcade net system. So. Um, that's going to be an interesting experience. So I wonder then, I'm assuming that these tables are going to be part of your admission price, you might say, to ArcadeNet. That you're not going to have to buy these tables because... I don't think so. I don't think so. I think it's going to be if you're paying your money for ArcadeNet on a monthly basis, a you're perk. going to have access to these mm. tables just like you're going to have access to the the library of... Uh, games that they have in, on the cloud. That's right. The, the typical it's library. essentially a perk. It's it's another reason why you'd want to go and, and get that membership if you want to access these tables. So from what I understand, the tables such as the Leprechaun King, and um, there's another one called, I think it's called Pizza Time. Yeah, Pizza Time. That's the one that uh, there was a trailer yeah. for. Yeah, so those two tables have been designed by some of the leading VPX um, development teams. And they've been sponsored by At Games, um, according to the press release that was released recently. Um, so, it when, spon when when I hear the word "sponsored by," it, that says to me that At Games paid them to build them. But the thing is that they've also made them available free of charge to the VPX community as well. So, developed for their platform, but also to give back to the open source community, they've made them available um, to the VPX community at large. So, because these are going to be streaming, um, that means, and like you said, that this is running on a hybrid Android platform, uh, mm -hmm. those that are interested in thinking that, oh, well, I'll have the entire vast library that is unavailable on VPX, why would I possibly need another, uh, you know, a different cab when I can just download? That's not going to be the case because it's going no. to be your... Your choice is only what's going to be available on ArcadeNet. It's not that, you being able to bring right. in whatever you want. No, that's right. You can't, for example, download uh, the table, the table assets, and load them somehow onto the at game system. From what I've seen so far in the in the press releases, because you need to have that VPX system available on the system to do that locally. Um, so you will be accessing any VPX content will be accessed directly through. Um, the online system. So you pointed out to me uh, a conversation that was questioning whether At Games even has uh, the ability to stream VPX. Uh, why don't you delve yeah. in a little bit to that? Yeah, so there was a, a discussion in one of the At Games forums on Facebook that um, one of the community members was concerned um, in, in a rather accusationary tone that... Um, you know, arcade, not arcade, one up. Um, at games was doing the dodgy on this, and <laughs> you know, there's there's some there was uh, uh, accusations being th flung around that you know, oh, you know, at games hadn't paid for the use and it was breaching the license agreement for uh, Visual Pinball that you know it's a non-commercial product and it was being used in a commercial setting. So you know, I. With our with our lawyers with our fake lawyers hats well and truly affixed to our heads. Yes, uh, I, I this went... would be Jared and Chris Esquire. Uh... <laughs> Jared and Chris HackLegalTeam.com um, <laughs> best prices available. Um, what I did is I started. Jared and Chris around. got me eight point one million dollars. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> eight point one million internet dollars. Um, so <laughs> not Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> internet <laughs> bucks <laughs> internet dollary dudes yeah so um i did some hunting around and um 
uh, I thought, well, you know, they're citing this this uh, licensing uh, text from the Visual Pinball Code archive. So I went hunting and I found the updated licensing agreement as per the SourceForge um, code. So I wonder if you might, uh, I don't know if you have that available to bring up on screen, Chris. But, SourceForge, uh, which one? That's the one with the special Line 29, I believe, correct? That's the, the, the magical Line 29. That's the one. Here we go. So if you can let me control highlight plus uh, that. line 29 here, it's it right says there. redistributions may not be sold, nor may they be used in a commercial product or activity. So if you're reading that, you can pretty much draw some broad conclusions that, well, hang on, isn't at games a commercial product? Uh, how then, could how, how could then VP be used in a commercial product? But this is uh, basically the process. same thing. That, I mean, probably why people questioned it. This is the same kind of argument that Zen is using against in their games. right? That's well, that's that's exactly right. So you know, I think this is the reason why this discussion happened in the first place. And you know, it's a pretty short um, license um, text thing, as a lot of open source um, license texts are. Um, but that's the essentially the addendum to the standard uh, GPL3 licensing rules that um, are dictated by this particular product. Um, so this, I think, is where the discussions stem from. But then if you um, go and do some digging around, you'll find that there's actually a bit of a precedent with um, using visual pinball in a commercial setting. And that was back, well, it was about 2005, I think, Chris, yeah. where they were um, doing this product called, um, it was called Ultracade. Ultracade. So, Watch this, Jared. Um, ah, there it is. There it is. So this was a bit hard to find. This was actually linked off the Wikipedia article about visual pinball in the footnotes. Um, and what you're seeing here on screen is from the Google's Wayback Machine or the uh, Internet Archive's Wayback Machine. So this post is scanning uh, spanning between 2005 to 2016 um as you'll see from the timeline now uh, from a historical perspective around 2005 um the the guy here david r foley um approached randy davis who is the creator of visual pinball to actually license um visual pinball for a commercial platform being the ultracade and the whole idea behind the ultracade was they were going to work with Visual Pinball um, to put 12 Belly Williams tables um, onto this product and then sell it as a commercial pinball cabinet. This was way back in 2005. So that's an interesting uh, bit of uh, digging because it suggests that, you know, what At Games have done here is they've just done exactly the same as um, uh, this guy did and said, hey, look, we'd like to actually use this um, commercially. How much do you want? And the guy said, well, I would like this much. And they probably just gone, okay, here you go. Thanks very much. And that's the end of the discussion, really. Yeah. Um, so I was originally wondering as well if this was legit, but it does pay to do your research. And I think in this case, it's probably totally above board from what I've seen. Um, so I maybe mean, call up basically, we have to assume it is uh, until proven yeah. differently because that's not... That's not for us to determine, no. and really not for anyone <laughs> to determine. It's 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 very much a by commercial arrangement only, and that's not something we're privy to, nor should we be. In right. fact, nor should the community be, because it's a business deal. So, right. you know, I think um, Bill from the forum, um, he he was rightful to actually say um, in in the the chat um, message there in the in the conversation, it's like there's no ill will done. Licenses have been paid. Everything is above board, and you really do just need to take their word for it that everything is good because um, it is. And you know, I, I kind of get why the the visual pinball community would be a little scared by this mm. because as it stands, the Basically, just call it Stern now. But uh, yeah, for the entire time of visual pinball, you know, going back as far as when I was into it, which was 2001, 2002. Uh, basically, the, 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 the manufacturers, the manufacturers looked the other direction. You yeah. know, there, they, there's a fair bit of copyright infringement happening in there, right? Um, which the manufacturers are okay with until they're not. Right, and right. and basically with Stern, the the 
general consensus, the idea was, hey, so long as you wait three years from the time that we make and are selling this pin, if you wait three years and then you post the ROMs and make the tables, we're, co we're good because we're no longer yeah. selling the table anymore. Um, yeah, that basically, was, if it's off the production line, we're happy. Right, right. So that's mm -hmm. why I say that was the the manufacturers just kind of doo -doo -doo -doo, looking the other way because the community wasn't necessarily hurting their sales. No. If anything, they were keeping pinball spirit alive. Um, Th that's right. They were actually doing a service to the industry. Right. So if all of a sudden a full-size digital cab at a really inexpensive price point that's going to get a whole lot more people on one of these things than a six thousand dollar unit uh that's going to potentially pucker the sphincters of stern who then might go wait a second and then all of a sudden actually come hammering down on the mm. visual pinball community which is in essence what happened to the main community uh that was yeah. posting all the roms and all of a sudden eyeballs focused on them and went yeah we're gonna cease and desist you <laughs> yeah every one of you basically right yeah. Right, then that, um, it's, you know, they, I can really understand that, as you say, Chris. Like they, they don't want that to happen. That would just destroy the community. Um, so, you know, and making original games like you've seen come up, like the Leprechaun King and Pizza Time, that that's not an easy endeavor. That uh, takes a lot of effort. Um, so, you know, you, losing three quarters of the library um, through a season's assist would be terrible for vpx yeah so yeah yeah i can imagine people are, are really holding like at the at the mention of commercial and vpx they're, they're probably holding out games pretty close to the fire to make sure that you know they're held accountable but i think from what i can see no ill will is happening here um it is because they're controlling the way you can actually manage and install things and it's all through their ecosystem they can actually control all the licensing particulars so as a consumer you don't need to worry about it 